Hello and welcome and thank you for joining me. Today we're going to talk about Winter 24 flow features that I am super excited about. I will be playing around in a pre-release environment. If you don't have access to this, you can also wait for your sandbox upgrades. The first feature that I'm super excited about is being able to log custom error messages on a record triggered flow. Until now, this was only possible using an Apex trigger. So if you wanted to show an error message that was customizable, you would have to use an Apex trigger for that. It was possible on a screen flow, but not on a record triggered flow. So why is that super important? Let's talk about a use case. Here I have an automation on account that just goes and updates the contacts is active flag to true anytime I set the active status of account to yes. Let me try to update the active flag to yes. And this is classic, right? We see this all the time. That is just a simple validation rule. And it's basically saying, please enter a title for this active contact. So what's happening right now is my flow is trying to go in and update the contact to active true, but then the validation rule is firing and saying, hey, this contact doesn't have a title. You need to fix that first before you can do this. So this is something we see all the time. Now, let me show you how to handle this in a better way. I'm gonna go back to my flow and keeping the flow the same, what I'm gonna do is add a fault path Close that out and here I can add a decision element this is not totally required but I'll explain why I'm adding a decision here so check for error the reason I'm adding adding this decision is let's say if you had multiple validation rules and you wanted to check for all those errors that's why I'm adding the decision and what I'm gonna say is you have access to this flow variable and fault message and I'm going to say the message contains, let's see what our message was going back here. I'm just going to copy this message. So I'm basically saying if the fault message contains this, okay, then what do I want to do? Now, this is the new thing, custom error. This is the new element that was introduced with window 24. And I'm just going to say, since I know that this is happening because of that validation rule, I'm going to say, please add title to all primary active contacts. So at the end, you can also choose when you want to show that error. So you can show that in a window or record page, just like validation rule. You can also choose to show that on an inline error on a field. Then you can also add additional error messages. So let's say if you had multiple validation rules or multiple scenarios, then you could just have multiple error messages as well. And that's it for default. Let's say there was not this validation rule fired, but something else happened, something else went wrong. Then you can also say, you know, um, I want to still have some sort of error log. So I can say general error. It's similar concept. If you know, try catch, um, we have to put like a general catch. If there's nothing else matched, then you want to show something nice to the user, please reach out to admin. This is just to catch something else. Hit cross and I'm just gonna save it as a new flow. I'm now gonna activate this. Try to update this to yes again. Hit save. And now my error message is please add title to all primary active contacts. I can remove that quotes, I don't need that quotes. Now this is not the only way to use this. You can use the custom error message in many ways. I can make a separate video, but another scenario I was looking at was I was trying to send email to the contact email, but I wanted to make sure that the email is not empty. So if the email was empty, I would give an error message to the user saying, hey, make sure that you update the email before you do this other update. So in that case, all I did was added a decision before my email action. So basically what I'm doing here is checking if the email is null or not null. If the email is null, then I will show a custom error message saying, please, correct the email address or complete the email address. If it is not null, then I'm just sending the email. So this is another way you can use it. You can also use it in scenarios where you have given delete rights to the user, but you don't want them deleting certain records. Then you can also show this error message ahead of time as they are trying to delete. So you can also fire the 
record triggered flow on a deletion of a record. Very powerful, very excited about this, and I can definitely think it will have a lot of use cases as we uncover more. Next feature I want to talk about is reactive screens. We already have seen a lot of excitements around reactive screen last release, but that was still limited that we could not use the reactivity in all the standard components. But with this release, you can. So before you do that, you would have to first to your process automation settings and check this checkbox where it says opt in to reactive display text beta. Now, this is going to be super powerful. You can use this with text, numbers, formula inside your screen flow and dynamically show that changes. Now, let's take a look at an example. So here I am on my screen flow. It's a very simple screen flow just to show you some examples. This is an input text. I'm just saying enter your name. And I also have a pick list. Just have a few colors in here, blue, yellow, red. And then I'm just using a display text. And all I'm doing is hello and using that enter your name by using the resource picker right here. So you can just use enter your name like that. And then I'm just putting the color grouping here just to show you how cool it looks. And then another screen I have here as well. I'm using another text box for case subject. Then what am I doing here? I am trying to show the user how many characters they have remaining. So this is a text, so it only takes 255 characters. I thought it would be helpful for the user to know how many characters are remaining. Now, then what I did is I created a formula field within the flow to show how many characters are remaining. I'll show that formula in a second. Another thing I'm doing here is just showing a data table. This is nothing brand new. We already have access to data table. So I am using the get accounts from the previous uh, element. And then this is where it gets exciting. So if you wanted to change the account name or update any records from the data table, you didn't have that capability in the same screen. But now you can use the reactive nature of the screen to be able to do that. So in this case, I have a data table which is configured to be single selected. And based on what they select, I can then just add few fields here. I tried with the this field's um, record variable. It didn't work. So I just basically created another text field right here. And then the default value, because I don't want the users typing that value again, the default value I just said, uh, give me the data table that I already have and then first selected row and I can say name because that's the field so I can just show the default value as the user select that, those values. All right now let's see this in action and what does it look like and actually let me show you the formula. So this is the formula. It's a very simple formula. All I'm doing is 255 minus length so you can use the length function from here and then case of subject. So that's our input element in the screen. And then when I go back, let's run this. So I'm gonna say my name is Pratima, grouping blue. So hello Pratima from team blue. Nice, so it's actually changing as I'm changing the value. Here we go. Next, case subject. So right now it says you have 255 remaining because the length is zero. I'm gonna start to say computer, Dot, 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 dot. Okay, so it's calculating in real time. This is amazing. Now, I'm just going to select one of these. As I'm selecting that, it is changing the value. Of course, it's not updating it yet because I would have to then take this value in the next screen and update in the background. But it is still cool to be able to just show these values here. I could show the pick list value here as well and make changes right here in the main screen flow. Pretty awesome, pretty exciting stuff. Since we're talking about screen flow, let's also zoom into this another feature under advanced section. You have two options now, refresh inputs to incorporate changes elsewhere in the flow, which is powerful because um, you're able to refresh the inputs and the experience will change as you go. And this is a good time for me to introduce to well-architected decision guides updates for winter 24. I highly recommend you checking this out. This is a really valuable resource. I cannot stress that enough because Salesforce themselves is providing a lot of recommendations around what tool to use because we have a lot of tools now in Salesforce. Now this is the main landing page and you can get into many other sub interest areas. Uh, one 
that I found super helpful was uh, decision guides around building forms, which compares dynamic forms with screen flows, Omni Studio, and LWC. And this is a very detailed article. And I was also super excited to see a lot of roadmap items for dynamic forms. So there are some really good nuggets in there. Basically, key takeaway is that you want to start with dynamic forms, not page layouts. And then if you have multi-screen nature requirement, then use flow. But if you want to meet complex um, UX requirements, customer facing sites, then flows are not recommended for that. You want to use Omni or LWC for that. Let's get back to flow features. Another flow feature that I want to talk about is transform. Now know that this feature is in beta. So I'm already running into some weird issues with this one, but I just want to show you what that looks like and where you can potentially use this for. So here is transform beta. And this reminds me of Omni Studio when you use the transformation there. I see this over time, maybe we'll transform into assignment. So we don't have to do assignments for everything. We can transform right here and assign data points. You can also use this for if you're getting data from external systems in JSON, and then you wanted to transform that to Salesforce values. So you can use transformation in that way as well. So if your source data is single record variable, your target data should also be single record variable and so on. If you're mapping from, let's say a group collection. So I'm going to do record collection variables here. This other side also needs to be multiple values and you can choose apex define or record. So let's just go with record and just going to pick something count contact role just to try this out. So what you do is click on one of the fields that you want to map, then click on the next field and then it will automatically bring them together. Perfect. If you wanted to map contact ID, that is my ID field because I'm on a contact collection, I would just map it to contact ID like that. Then I can also map each active to let's say it's primary. I can do that like that. And if you wanted to do any changes in terms of values, you can just double click on the target and then FX will appear, that's the formula. So if you wanted to make any changes to the values here, like if type is this, then make it this way and so on. So you can do that formula right here in the transformation. One thing I don't like is that you can just set default values without mapping something. So coming from Boomi and other ETL tools, you would, should be able to like set a default value, but it doesn't like that. You have to map something and then do the formula to do that. So certainly a lot of limitations I'm already seeing, but just wanted to give you a quick tour of this. Um, and then I'm going to hit save. Let's debug this just to see what it looks like in the debug. And looks like I found some records. Go to transform and this is what it looks like. It got all the account contacts. This is the account ID, actives true, and all of this. That's the source data and it also is giving me target. So as you can see, took the account ID, true, contact ID, so it's basically mapping the values that I mapped in the transform. And after this, the next step, what I could do is just create the account contact role record collection easily from here. So instead of having to go through loop, all the account contacts and then create assignments, then actually create the second record collection, I could just do everything here. So what I was trying to do is create opportunity contact roles using all the account contacts. And all I needed to do was get the opportunity ID, which I couldn't set from here. It would be great to be able to set default values right from here, but that's not possible yet. All right, that is all for today. I will continue to read release notes once they come out and we'll come back with more additional features on the flow and the platform. And if you're not aware, here's another awesome flow resource, unofficial salesforce.com. There is a super awesome blog post here on window 24. And in general, they are a great place to go to if you're looking to power your flow even further than what they are capable of. So they have a lot of cool uh, components that you can download for free and use in your org to superpower your flow even further. All right, with that, thank you so much for watching.